Hello everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. You're my best friend ever. <sighs> you know, it doesn't make it less awkward every week. <laughs> <laughs> and awesome brownie reviewer Silver Quill. Help me! I'm feeling... <laughs> I think you're feeling broken glass all over your face now. <laughs> it kind of tingles. No one can run from my friendship. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, and today we're... <laughs> this, is, this is going to be an interesting one to tackle. We're reviewing episode 12 of season 5, overall episode 103, titled Amending Fences, written by M.A. Larson. And I'm going to read you the synopsis straight from the wiki page, because I don't know how to word. <laughs> In this episode, uh, Twilight Sparkle returns to Canterlot with Spike to rekindle all friendships from before her move to Ponyville. Now, for those of you who don't remember, Twilight do did leave a couple of friends behind when she uh, went to take care of the whole Nightmare Moon issue and all that, and... This episode is going back to talk about these characters, because apparently Twilight did have friends back then, but apparently they were not as uh, tight and deep as the friendships that she made in Ponyville. So, uh, I this I am not sure how you how to feel about this episode. So I'm gonna ask you guys, what did you think of this one? What are your your first impressions of it, and what do you make of it? Because wow, and like always, inverted alphabetical order. So, uh, Silver. You are first in line. Oh, that might be I'm first on the firing squad. Firing squad of friendship. <laughs> firing squad of friendship. Except my friendly bullets. This was this was a standout episode. Uh, I mean, it hit on so many emotional levels. People, a lot of fans I hear really identify with Moon Dancer and her her situation and her hurt feelings. And I got to take uh, one little nugget of continuity from the first episode and expand on it was just a, a wonderful literary technique. And, you know, I will never think, oh, they intended this from the start. No, but they, they saw an element and they expanded on it and it was just very well done. But, and this is where I tend to divert from the fandom, there are two messages kind of implied in this story that I think don't work well and can actually undermine or send an unhealthy uh, message to, to a young audience. Now, I'll get into that as we, as we discuss the episode proper, but it's those things that keep me from gushing over this episode as uh, one of my favorites. But it is an exceptionally well-done story. And as for me, I thought it was a pretty interesting episode, like how they did a send back to season one, episode one, the first few minutes in the, to the show where Twilight ran off to Ponyville and left her friends here. That, that was an interesting story mechanic that they use. And the whole story here about how Twilight is pushing her lesson of friendship towards Moon Dancer here was a bit creepy, yet I do understand where she's coming from because she lived that and she knows what the power of friendship can do. <laughs> What I, what do I have left to say? Because you guys pretty much spoke my my language there. Wow. I guess this is going to be one of those episodes where we all we're all going to have the same opinion. Um, yeah, it is true that there are some parts on this episode that uh, we're gonna go into it later that they really don't match with how a situation like this will develop in reality, and that if you were to try uh, whatever Twilight tries on this episode, you might uh, get into trouble. But this is something that it tells me that is going to be a theme throughout the entire the, the entire season. That is, uh, heal wounds from the past, close open open wounds, or or like fix any anything that previous seasons might have uh, broken. Like in in season one with Gilda, what happened, and then we have the lost treasure of Griffonstone, where they they fix that friendship. Or at least they take the first step to fix that friendship. And this one feels like exactly the same thing. And if, if we were to believe uh, the synopsis of, few, of a few episodes that were leaked a few uh, months ago, which I'm not sure if they are true or not, but if we were to believe those, it seems that this is going to be a, a recurrent theme throughout the entire season about fixing the errors of the past. 
And I think this episode was really good on that regard. I will say I think this is one of my favorite episodes of the season. But I think I need to let it cool down first and see it from a from a different perspective. But well, let's let's talk about it. And um, from the get go, we're gonna have a spoiler. So if you haven't watched the episode, stop here, go watch it, and then come back. But we're gonna talk about this one right now. So uh, from now on, spoiler alert. So uh, what do you guys think? Should we talk about about this episode scene by scene or with uh, through themes? I think themes is better for this one because the scenes here are interesting, but what we really want to talk about is the themes. Agreed? No? I'm down with that. Yeah, I'm down with that as well. We can go in order, actually. So, the episode begins with Twilight Sparkle relaxing after an entire week of uh, friendship meetings and all that. And Spike brings up an interesting, uh, an interesting point, is that it is ironic for her to be the princess of friendship when she wasn't that good of a friend when they were living back in Canterlot. And uh, this is evidenced by the lack of pictures that Twilight has from her Canterlot friends, which is, like, none. There's only pictures of uh, ponies from Ponyville. That's quite something now, isn't it? Twilight wasn't interested in friendship. In fact, I, I, I kept thinking through the first opening, if you can't remember their names, obviously it wasn't that important a friendship. But Twilight has always been, well, from the very start of the show, has never been interested in making friends. That's what the whole setup was. And that's why Celestia told her to, well, go to Ponyville and make friends. But Twilight takes this a little too far in the opening in my eyes. Uh, at first she's like, oh no, I must have hurt them so bad. Mm. Uh, yeah, Twilight, you're, you're really overestimating yourself, uh, Believing if you're not their friends, they must be leading wretched lives. I mean, why would you, why, why would you think that just because your cutie mark is on the center of the god tree of this world and the princesses all rally around you in every seat? You know what? I'm answering my own question. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget she's the toy marketing pony. No, wait, that's Rambo Dash. I take it out of that. That's I wouldn't say that. She, <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that's exactly right. That's good. That's, no, but it's like, yeah, you you do bring a good point. Is that if they weren't very good friends before, I don't think there there was that big of a loss back then. So maybe they didn't even notice that she left. Mm. And uh, it's funny because later on in the episode we realize that yeah, they didn't really miss her all that much because they're uh, healthy individuals. True, <laughs> true. But but here's the thing: they're they're making such a big deal. It's because Twilight is the princess of friendship, and here I am, the guy who's always harping, you know, I want to see the princesses live up to their roles. But this is not really, I think, a good way to define the princess of friendship. You don't have to be friends with everyone. Friendship is valuable because it's not an everyday occurrence. And it's meaningful when it happens. And plus, you know, you, 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 Cadence is the princess of love. Uh, does that mean she gets to marry every stallion and mare who comes her way? Oh, no, she wished that to happen. I want yeah. that to happen. Pony polygamy. The wedding, ni- the, 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 the wedding nights will be so much fun. Oh, uh, God, no. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, are we going out of subject? But, yeah, with the, uh, with Twilight, like her, she does take on this almost like it's her duty to fix it. Not so much so that she feels guilty for it, but I think it's not until she arrives to Canterlot that she realizes that this is, uh, this has been a big of an issue. Like, she looks at that and says, oh no, I lost my friendships back then, now I'm gonna have to fix them because I'm the princess of friendship. And she's like flying all the way to Canterlot, she's, uh, not all that worried, she actually seems really happy about it. And then she arrives to the library that we saw in the very first episode of the series, and, Okay, who takes care of the... Uh, nobody took care of that. It's full of leaves, it's full of dust, nobody looked after it. Like, Princess Celestia, you are a terrible ruler for not taking care of that library. It's like, look at all those books suffering the pass of time. I agree. Like, who is taking care of it? Because I, I know... How how do I put this? The, that library is kind of Twilight's bedroom? Yes, no? Agreed? No? It's like her old house. Yeah. Yeah, so at least I'm assuming that, okay, when they're there, Spike and Twilight do the cleaning up, I'm assuming, if not the chambermaids. But 
once they're gone, or once Princess Celeste has sent them off on an assignment, and Twilight declared that she'll be staying in Ponyville for the rest of the whole series, that's an okay pass to say to the chambermaids, okay, another room is vacant, clean it out. This we see that, okay, Princess Celestia loves Twilight and kept the room untouched. Yeah. A little too untouched. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I guess there is one thing, there is a difference between loving a character and just d- disregarding the entire uh, uh, house <laughs> very much because there is not just a room, there is an entire building. True. And that, that will, I will bring that up later when, uh, when Twilight does something for, um, for one of her friends that involves that, that library but yeah i mean it's I, I do love the continuity in this in this scene though i mean yeah i'm looking at the library and it looks disarrayed but the book is still open on the elements of harmony the hourglass is still there there is even the the, the package with uh the, the birthday present with the destroyed teddy bear and everything it's like they these guys literally went back to the first series season to the first episode and they just dug up all of these little details and put them there. Like, the, all the continuity nuts like myself are losing their minds, saying, ah, it's Same perfect. <laughs> oh, oh, but if, but if we're gonna, continuity is a double-edged sword. Because, you know, Twilight's coming back to this building for the first time in at least a year. Okay, a year. Okay, let's go for that. Uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to make a video just debating that year thing. I keep saying but, that in Equestria, years have more than twelve months. Well, that is either the only explanation. In but, how many times has Twilight been to Canterlot since she moved to Ponyville? A few a lot. times, and every time she didn't go to her old home. Well, that's because she's on assignment. She. Probably rented, or she stayed in the guest room? She stayed in the guest room when her own home is across the street. Hmm. That She's makes sense. She's chillaxing at the palace while her old home is within spitting distance. <laughs> <laughs> well, she made her friends sleep in the side room when her old home is just across the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, princess of friendship, everybody. <laughs> Spike got to sleep in the gutter beca- with the runoff from his old home. Uh, I'm just getting ha- dark who, now. Who uh, cares? Who cares about Spike anyway? Uh, <laughs> oh well. <laughs> but, but clearly joking, we're joking, clearly we're nitpicking right about now. We're just the, dra- the dragonites. The dragonites are are going to kill me now. Uh, <laughs> But no, yeah, you do bring a good point. Is that they didn't? T- nobody took care of this of this place. But I guess that the way that I see it now, it's kind of like um, I want. I, I don't know if they they are gonna go that deep within metaphor or something like that. Though this is Emil Larson writing it, so who knows? Mm. Uh, I want to think that that building it's just there to reinforce the state on which he, she left. Uh, she left Canterlot. Like she left everything and forgot about everything before that. Only to focus on, on, you know. Magic. Study. On, on, on her study, on her new friendships and all that, and, and on her duty. I mean, maybe before she didn't have that connection with her friends, but with the main six, it's obvious that they are connected through the elements of harmony and through the, pa- the fact that they have to keep Equestria safe mm-hmm. from any and all threats. Even more so now with the castle and the map that, you know, the GPS map that <laughs> tells them where to go. Oh, true. So, so maybe Twilight didn't see their previous friendships as that important. And I would be lying if I say that I don't fi- feel identified with that. <laughs> because I too have had friends that I have moved on from, and I haven't seen those friends in forever. I'm going to go into detail about that later. But yeah, besides... God, I'm talking about... I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I just realized that I'm talking a lot in this episode. It's um, okay. No, I... Is one thing that you have to take into account before we keep going any further is that the guys who work on this show, the guys who write for this show, they haven't been able to touch this because I'm pretty sure Hasbro wasn't interested in talking about this. Like, if they haven't tackled the issue of Twilight not being at her house and not being at her home and all that, it's because they didn't have a chance. 
Can Can we make a toy out of this? Uh, Probably not. Then it is dead to us. (laughs) Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's actually very, very, very much what might have happened. Well, the story does play a part too. I mean, um, telling a story about Twilight going back home and cleaning it is not fun. Come on, on, they had a Snow White reference cleaning just your library. Well, that is for comedy's sake, but hey, that that is another story for another day. So, Twilight, upon seeing how her library is in complete disarray, she decides to uh, fix her friendships, like now more so than ever. And I think that that's where she takes it as a personal matter, more than like, you know, a, a friendship assignment. So uh, she tells Spike to gather the names of her friends and to meet them, uh, so they can meet them tomorrow. And it, <sighs> she was friends with Lyra Heartstrings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was. Actually, this is probably the greatest continuity. Uh, Emmy Larson sort of staves off any criticism or or, or background nitpicking from fans. They always say. <laughs> Oh yeah, we've been in, we visit Ponyville all the time and we've seen you lots of times, but you never really said hi. Again, great, <laughs> great investment in friendship. Uh, and you know, we were the bridesmaids at Cadence's wedding. <laughs> and I just it was like, hey Larson, you're, you're, you're stealing all of my ability to, to poke fun. You can see it to my mind. Get out of my head, Emily Larson. No! <laughs> hey, Silver. By his book, Penny Royal Academy on Amazon. But there is one thing that I, I, this isn't what the episode was aiming for, so I understand it's not part of the story, but it sort of closed the door on something I'd hoped for. Oh? Oh? That is? In the Cancelot wedding, Shining Armor said that Cain's bridesmaids were let go because all they wanted to do was meet Cancelot royalty. Now granted, he was uh, not exactly in his right mind, so that could have been a lie. Mm-hmm. But what's the first thing Cold uh sorry, what's her she's not Colgate now, she's Minuet. 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 So I'm so used to the fandom name. Mm-hmm. Minuet, the first thing she wants to do is get a shot with the princess and her wings. <laughs> and I thought, oh my gosh, here's oh, yeah. it, it, is Twilight going to learn that her friends are only taking interest in her now because she's a princess? Oh, I thought the well, same thing too. Well, the answer is no. Uh that really wasn't the thrust of this episode. But I just thought, you know, in a show called Friendship is Magic, and given what we saw in Griffin the Brush Off uh, and uh, The Lost Treasure of Griffinstone, we'll probably never have an episode where a friendship is false. Oh, yeah. Because that would mean it's not friendship. I was thinking about the same thing, too, when you said that. Like, uh, Minuet here, like, she's just in it because Twilight's popular, and... Oh wow, this is going to be one awesome lesson that they're going to tell. But no, we're going to get something different, which is also awesome, but eh. I'm rather glad that they didn't go that route. Uh, that's because this show is kind of like allergic to cynicism or like, you know, something along those lines. And anytime that they bring that in, like the episode doesn't really come out all that well, like murder well, uh Putting your hoof down, hearth swarming Eve hell. Any any episode written by Mary Weather Williams has a big load of like that that heavy punch of reality. Um, they don't do that in this one, and I am glad they don't, because exactly what you said, Silver, is like the friendships in this episode are actually very true. Even those that seem to be broken, they are actually very honest. I am glad they didn't go the uh, I am friends with you just because out of pure interest. And, by the way, Minuet is so, so sweet. Like, she's the, somebody was comparing it, like, was comparing her with, like, she's the Pinkie Pie of the original, the original group group of friendships that Twilight has. And I can very much see that, actually. Mm -hmm. True that, true that. Uh, but, uh, well, being Minuet the first one that they meet, all that, they take a selfie, and... (laughs) They meet with the with the rest of the with the rest of the group with uh, Lemon Hearts and uh, Twinkle Shine, <laughs> and they meet up at at, at, at Donald Joe's. The, That's a do it. Uh, yeah, Yay. and it it's awesome because you can actually see Donald Joe talking with uh, Spike, talking with Spike in the background. 
So like, mm. Spike, you've had too much. You're cut off. I just need one more sprinkles, man. <laughs> just one more sprinkle. Come on. No, don't tell me like that, man. Spike, have you ever been? No, Spike is like, have you ever been in love, Joe? Mm-hmm. No, I've been a donut seller all my all my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I love donuts. I uh, love donuts. Uh, let's not go there. But yeah. I have to. I have to be very careful pronouncing the name of Donut Joe because I can pronounce it as the name of a certain uh, uh, artist out there. <laughs> it sounds very similar to Donut Joe. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be difficult. Uh, but, Donut Joe, Donut Joe, and his holier than thou attitude. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, but then uh, uh, take that's. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no remedy. No remedy. <laughs> No remedy at all. Uh, but here we have Twilight uh, apologizing to her friends for all the grief and all the all the uh, pain that she might have caused by n- not saying anything or leaving without saying anything so many uh, so, uh, so much so long ago. And yeah, they all seem so torn about <laughs> about it. They are so sad and t- and they're not at all. Yeah. They actually take it really well, and it's it's weird. They are so they so moved on from from her <laughs> uh, that they kind of accept that they didn't that she didn't want to be friends with them anymore because she wasn't all that much of a friend back then. Well, then it's not even that accusatory. I, uh, sorry, kind of striking personal chord. We, I've had, well, someone I wouldn't really consider to be a friend. We fell out of touch. And it's like, you know, we just was not a supportive, not friendly person. And I was just like, okay, I don't consider this a huge loss. Uh, so this is far more congenial. They're just saying, hey, you seemed busy. It seemed like you had a lot going on. And we didn't mind. We didn't take it personally. And I love that because it's sort of, it's like, at first, this seems like a lesson for Twilight. Once again, she has a tendency to think about an issue and enlarge it in her perception until it seems like a disaster. When really, it's not that big a deal. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Well, that has always been Twilight's MO. A good example is is about time. Like, oh, yes. That lesson itself is just a reminder for Twilight to just relax and don't think too much. But then, what, as we are about to head into later in the episode... It starts to validate her paranoia. Yeah, her concern kind of like gets uh, gets justified uh, because the toilet is like, "Where is Moondance? What happened to her?" And they are like, "Well, we don't know." She kind of like uh, she she moved on at the same time that that you left. Uh, this happens right after the flashback that we have to the their old chemistry lab, right? <laughs> Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I almost jump over it, but no. Let's talk about the flashback because the flashback is, the flashback is joyous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at least for me. At least for me, because seeing Philly Twilight again, ah, where is my insulin? I think I have super mega diabetes now. I'm just thinking about what happened there to Lemon something. What's the name again? <laughs> lemon lemon drops. drops. Lemon drops. Le- lemon hearts. Lemon, lemon hearts. hearts. Lemon like- hearts. Wow. How how did... do you do that? <laughs> very very carefully. It, that's that's one of the hallmarks of kids. You look at it and you're like, how in how on earth and beyond did you do that? Oh, so I, true. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I started squeezing my nose against the beak, and then I started to get my whole head inside. <laughs> How do I skull? How do I bones? <laughs> oh, wow. I'm made of fluff and marshmallows. <laughs> there is no other explanation. Makes sense. I just don't know what went wrong. <laughs> uh, oh, my gosh. One thing I do like about their friendship here is everyone's a unicorn. Like, it does make sense. Well, Canterlot is the elite city of Equestria, and there are like, there, there seem to be a lot more unicorns than there are uh, Earth ponies or Pegasi out there. Mm-hmm. All hail the master race! Hail. All hail the unicorn master race! <laughs> uh, but I, I do like. We do not need opposing thumbs to use weapons. We can pull triggers on our own. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I do like the flashback though, because in here we see Philly, Lyra, we see, uh, well, most of the Phillies here. Philly Twilight. Yeah, yeah I mean, oh, they are all Phillies. Philly Twilight and Philly Moon Dancer, they are both sitting at the desk reading a book. And Dicky and they, pretty, they pretty much have the same kind of like way of being. It's like, uh, I got the wrong book. 
That's hilarious. But according to this book, you have to mix these before you put these together and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, they, they no wonder they could have got, got along so well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially when Twilight has the voice of Bubbles. Who doesn't like Bubbles? Like, oh, God. Wait, did she you, use Bubbles right. voice over here? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it is, it is Tara Strong, so. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But did she use the Bubble voice? She yes. does use the Bubble voice. Oh, wow. She now is. I need to double check. She's using the Bubble voice. Oh, okay. All hail the Bubble voice. The thing is that I don't remember Philly Twilight having that voice when she was, uh, when, when we saw the flashback on, uh, on season one. Well. But I, well, it is difficult to keep the voice consistent. No, because the flashback in season one was not that much. It was just her, well, it's just adult Twilight explaining the story of what she went through. And she did talk though. Yeah, the most of the talking was done near the end where, um, she was sorry about something and then like, yes, 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 yes. That's about it. Yeah. Still. But yeah, what were you going to bring up, Silver? That the, that, well, one, in Twilight's Kingdom, I criticized that basically her friends are all the 1%. Mm-hmm. They're the Cantalot mm-hmm. royalty and Trixie. You know, outside the main six. You know, all the main six have sort of their own little circle. Just for yeah. some, it's littler than others. <laughs> uh, so for a long time, I was like, hang on, Twilight's only friends outside of the main six are princesses, her brother, and her semi-rival. So suddenly, oh my gosh, she has this circle of friends that are just, uh, normal. you know, normal. Uh, except that it turns out, I think Lemon Hearts is the, is the planner for royal functions. Like, oh god, even when she makes new friends, they're the one percent. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, in that episode, like we we noticed that uh, Minuet also was in the line to talk to Spike about something. Yeah, so I, I'm the, I'm just guessing they're that they're doing something like work, they're like the consent, whatever. conventions. A twilightist, twilightist. But but uh, the other thing is that we've actually seen this troupe before. They're obviously time travelers mm-hmm. because in the comic, The Fall of Sunset Shimmer, <gasps> all of them were meant to be main sixified, uh, friends that, that, uh, Sunset Shimmer turned down. <laughs> and, the fight thing is, and the fight thing is, well, Moon, Moon Dancer was, uh, was stylized after Twilight in this episode. She was stylized after Fluttershy in that. Oh yeah. I remember that. I remember that. You know, is that finding continuity between the comics and the TV show, it's a futile attempt because they don't follow the same Rude. path. Mm. In fact, oh. I will say that the comics take place within the same continuity as the Equestria Girls uh, universe. <laughs> Probably. Because... Well, I... Go on. Well, I, I, don't, I don't disagree. I just find it funny. This is like the troop they keep pulling out. There's something about the color balance or some such. <laughs> <laughs> the force is strong with this one. Though, when you say about her friends being part of the 1%, yeah, you're absolutely right. But then again, her family is also part of the 1%. I mean, think about it for a moment. There's uh, Twilight's parents. They be in a room in a house big enough to uh, like have like tall ceilings and like big telescopes and all that. Their son is uh, he's a cadet of the Royal Guard and their daughter is going to be uh, is going to be the pupil or the pupil of Princess Celestia, the ruler of all the land, and the one that at that time was controlling both the sun and the moon. That is like getting lessons from the president of the United States well, or the, the 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 Queen of England. It's a big kind of it's kind of a big issue. So of course, if you have that kind of uh, social position. You're gonna have friendships within that social circle, and if you are part of the one percent, you're gonna have friends that are part of the one percent. I don't really see it that way because, in the very beginning, or in my opinion here, where the Twilight's parents are just normal folks, like Shining Armor joining the cadet, like that could be any Joe Schmo. Joining the military is not that hard. You just have to in this. Getting up to rank, that's something else. And Twilight joined Celestia's school for gifted unicorns the same way that any other pony did. But Celestia took notice of her because of her power levels, which were over 9,000. Even though we are kind of... Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Even though we're kind of... noises. Breathing too much into it, like we kind of always do. Uh, from a 
f- from a narrative point of view, I can understand why she's friends with uh, with characters who are still kind of like having an, an important position uh, when it comes to the Canterlot life. And then again, it seems like the kind of place where if you're not doing something important, you are a nobody. Or if you are not part of a business, you are a, you are a nobody and you have no no point though to be on that city. Why are you even here? <laughs> well, it's basically like real life when you think about it. Like we treat yeah. here our friends because of a show for little girls, and we treat here our talking because we are we love doing the same thing, which is analyze a show for little girls and pick every little detail. <laughs> Besides, if you go to a school of gifted gifted unicorns, you're not going to make friends with uh, Pegasus. Ah, true, true. Or, or with uh, who, whoever else. I just, I'm not I sure. Just, I just find it funny because at the start of the at the start of the series, everyone was praising Oh Twilight's this relatable character. <laughs> so he's, she's the every girl. She's you know she's we can totally see ourselves. And now it's like, uh oh, she was noble from the get go and totally elite. And was she? Now she was, yeah, she might have. I'm, I'm of the mind her parents probably were high rollers in Cantalot society to have this many perks and opportunities. I don't think so. I, I don't well, see Well, her it father, way. her father, her father could be a big astronomer and her mom is a writer. Uh, from mm-hmm. what we have seen in the comics, not the writer of the Darindu novels. Don't go mm-hmm. there. It's yeah, not, yeah. That, that was never <laughs> no. established. No. I, I subscribe to the, to the theory that that Darindu thin diploma on the, on the Kaden Sunshine and Armor comics is just a, an award, the Darindu award. It doesn't mean anything else from what I, yeah, from what yeah. I understand. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. But I don't know. With, with this one, it's debatable if her parents are elitist or not. I'm not saying elitist, but they are elite. They are what? up oh. there. Yeah, I mean, let's say they're well off. Mm. They're in the camp of, I'm not poor, but I'm not rich. But I don't think they are neither. Is that when you were saying that Twilight was the every girl, that she was so relatable and all that, I don't think we really had that. She wasn't really the every girl. She wasn't really that average. Oh. I mean, just from the way, that, the place that she lives in, uh, that doesn't look like an apartment. That doesn't look like an everyday house. That looks like, like a library that you <laughs> will build in Minecraft when <laughs> you have like a lot of free time and nothing else to do. It's like, it's a big building no. just for one little pony. And uh, let me finish. Let me finish. And it's like, we were related to Twilight because she was an introvert, asocial, and kind of like doesn't want to make friends. She just wants to read books. She was very, uh, very into herself and nothing else. That's why people found her relatable. Not, not because she was the, the, the everyday girl. She looked like it, but she definitely had something that made her special. The, oh. the Boast Busters episode kind of proved it. She was so, she's so f- powerful. Well, she has been, well, okay. The- the Boastbuster episode is another story, but from the very beginning, we can relate to Twilight because, well, every one of us can see something in her that we can relate. She's kind of the person who doesn't really want to make friends, but is forced into a situation where she has to make friends. And when she's there, and when the time comes when she needs to leave, she doesn't want to because I'm having so much fun and I don't want to step away from my friends. And... Being in a situation where, in her case, she has the option to stay, she took it. For us, probably we wouldn't, and we have to say goodbye to our friends. Well, we've we've talked about this at length, but yeah. I'll just say, Twilight, I did see a lot of herself the introvert, but then she stopped being that. Twilight has always been an omnivert, as Moondancer is about to uh, show demonstrate. Us. When did you notice the change? Did anyone notice? Episode 3. Really? That fast? Are you kidding? Yeah. After, after Twilight learned that friendship is awesome, she, she bought in wholeheartedly. I, um, I, I, she's learned more about it. They've, as she, they've integrated elements of what she learned into her character. But by the end of episode two, you know, friendship is magic mm-hmm. part two, she was wholeheartedly an omnivert. Mm, and during the start of season two, she proved that friendship is awesome. She basically but went her, bananas. Yeah. <laughs> but it took another three seasons for her to actually realize, oh, hey, I forgot there were other ponies that catch a lot. Oops. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 okay, okay, okay. Come on. Uh, hang on a minute. Let's talk about that for a second because that's not fair. That's, the, that's not fair to the character of Twilight because 
Uh, and this episode feels a, a lot like the writers did want to do this. The writers really wanted to talk about this. They wanted to go back to this because that... Okay, this is going to sound very sacrilegious, but those two first episodes were not very well written. Like, they had a lot of things going for them that... They, they did follow into, they did fall into quite a lot of, uh, stereotypes, cliches, and left a lot of, di- many open, uh, plot holes, left and right. And only now they are fixing them. And I think the reason why we haven't seen Twilight go back to, to Canterlot to fix these friendships was because it wasn't marketable for Hasbro. If you want fair, son, you best go to the Crystal Empire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh my god. The, the crystal, the, 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 the empire of we are never gonna sell these goddamn toys, haven't we? <laughs> no? Uh, god. Okay, what do we do next? Ah, uh, put, put wings on her. Okay, fine. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the other pony that we're not mentioning. Yes, yeah, we've, we've been, been, we've been avoiding her. Yep. Yeah, we've been avoiding poor Moon Dancer. Uh, <laughs> so, Twilight is wondering, what, why, where is Moon Dancer? Where did she go? And they're like, oh, she moved next to the stadium. We kind of lost touch with her after the, after that, uh, uh, party that we didn't, uh, we, that you, you didn't go to. Mm-hmm. So they go to meet Moon Dancer, and after Twilight breaks her door, <laughs> thanks, Princess of Friendship, and she, thanks, uh, Emily Larson. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Emily Larson. <laughs> well, he's writing this, so, uh, we do meet Moon Dancer, and she's definitely a, oh god, how do I put this? Twilight um, recolor. She's, a, well, no, she's a re- recolor of Twilight, but, more in more than just in design. I mean, she's not just a recolor of Twilight color wise, but also in personality. <laughs> I it's love like this. it's like Twilight is looking into a mirror of what she could have been, mm-hmm. and that's what they say. Is like, wow, she's exactly she's she's just that's that's Moon Dancer. She was just like you, and Twilight is like exactly like me. And I'm like, wow, that's actually really true. And well, then go ahead. This episode relies a lot on visual themes, like you say, the the state of Twilight's old home, library, what have you, uh, it being in disarray and neglected because reflects how she feels about uh, Canchalot. Moon Dancer's visual similarity to Twilight not only is is Moon Dancer a reflection of what Twilight could have been, Twilight is a reflection of what Moon Dancer could be, or maybe not a princess, but more outgoing, and the state of Moon Dancer's home. You know, dusty, crumbling, fragile is a state of how her life has become. Mm-hmm. So there's a very strong visual uh, themes running through this episode, and how her personality is as well. She's very, she's very fragile. We're gonna see that towards the end of the episode. How actually she she keeps a facade, but is not a very strong one. She's really she's really fragile on the inside. There is no other word for me to put it. God, my vocabulary. From her looks, like when we first see her, she's a hermit. Like she does her daily schedule, her daily routine to the T. Like she just wants to study. And this bothers me a bit. Like this really bothers me in the sense of what is her end goal? You know what I mean? Her end goal is just to gather more more knowledge. She's Wikipedia, basically. You know I mean, but uh, still, like, when we study, like, in general, like, any human or any person, when we do something, like, when, like, for, let's just say that if we're not doing this, like, okay, we go to work, we earn money, and with that money, we can buy our stuff. Like, say, I'm a guy who likes to play MMOs. I go play my WoW every day, and well, that's the thing I do every day. So, I mean, at least that's my start and end. Like well, I... you know, maybe she is studying a degree or a career, and because she's such a spectacular student, she has some. Uh, she gets a uh, uh, how do you call when the uh, state gives you money because you have proven to have the best grades in the entire class, but the thing and they is, are giving you. The thing is, they are giving that, you support. She does. No, she's not even doing that because when Twilight asks, what she's how do studying, you know? She's she's just studying a lot of different things. Yeah, but Who knows, maybe is, she's is just studying it... different, many different careers at the same time. Yeah, but she's just studying. She's she's just studying for the sake of studying. There's, there's no people who do it only. There's people who do nothing but studying. Yeah, but well, they... uh, well, oh, okay. Hey, for they do ask her, "Oh, are you looking to become a teacher or something?" She says, "No, I just want to study." Uh, and there is a value in the pursuit of knowledge, but 
Well, this gets down to one of those unintentional messages that I, I find brings this episode down for me. You're bringing me down, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. So if I could for, forgive me if I shifted overdrive for a minute. No, that's after, fine. after that first encounter doesn't go so well, Twilight stalks this pony for three <laughs> days. It's so nice to know that her royal duties can go on pause so she can violate someone's privacy. Uh, um, her beep was not beeping this way. Uh, her flank. <laughs> yeah, her flank is not beeping. <laughs> the map doesn't need help. Uh, but here's what the first thing. Here in America, we're geared towards the extrovert culture. You have to be out there. If you're not wanting to go party every night, obviously there's something wrong with you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the mentality. Uh, now, Moondancer, perhaps more so than Twilight, strikes me as an introvert. Twilight, I call her an omnivert because she seems skilled at both social and personal time. This episode starts, she's hosted three functions. <laughs> the Grand Galloping Gala, the Yaks, and uh, mm. the Friendship Summit. Oh, didn't those go swimmingly? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so now she needs a quiet night. And yet she's totally at ease asking folks to gather for dinner. Moon Dancer strikes me as a true introvert. She needs quiet time. She would rather read a book than go to a party. And in all honesty, that is fine. That is actually healthy. True. You don't have to do that. But Twilight is insisting that because she goes to and from the library in her home, there must be something wrong with her. And I think, well, no. Thankfully, the visual theme of her rundown home shows there's more, there's more at play than just, oh, she's not She's not going out to party. There goes something's wrong with her. Mm. Well, the but, visual but, theme does help. Sorry. It helps, but at the same time, Twilight is approaching this as she's not she's not talking with lots of other people and not gathering as many friends as possible. Ergo, there's something wrong. Mm. To go building on what you said, Norman. I'm sort of gathering my thoughts for a video on this very topic. A lot of people argue that true happiness. It's not, you know, pleasure in the moment. It's not getting the new toy or, or making that one new friend or getting that dream job. That Those are momentary. Mm-hmm. A life of happiness is where you're geared towards the pursuit of a virtue and your actions reflect that. So even in the bad times, you feel like you're building towards something substantial. Mm-hmm. Moon Dancer, as she is right now, is not building towards anything. She's gathering knowledge. But there's no purpose to it. What it on if ponies ever do actually expire, uh, all that knowledge goes away with her, and she leaves no mark. True that. Do you think that maybe she's using this uh, as a way to you know shelter herself from getting hurt again? Probably a little of both. I think she, she. This is a genuine passion for her. No shame in that. In fact, that's very good. But oftentimes we use our passions as escapes. Yeah, she's using the book reading as a, as a way to not get hurt once again. And I think that we, later on when they organized the party for her and everything, that's, that's made clear, is that Moondancer hasn't moved on from that, mm. uh, that incident. And here's something that I want to compare. Like, Moondancer here is studying for the sake of just studying. Twilight studied because, well, she wants to better herself and ergo, Probably, if Celestia didn't stop her, she'll be in the same boat as Boon Dancer here. And Twilight moved on from that point to become the Princess of Friendship because she found friends. And Boon Dancer here didn't. She just studied for the sake of study. This reminds me of another character, um, Star Soul the Bearded, who studies, create new spells, but one thing that he didn't discover was friendship. And that's what his spell did not work fully. Except when he dis- except when he made friends with Scorpan, uh, <laughs> that, that that's gotten a little that's gotten a little confusing over the seasons. <laughs> no comment on that, so, man. Per- perhaps from just three days of observation, Twilight is making wrong assumptions. Is that? Uh, uh, no, I I do agree with what you say. Is that do you sometimes need to be alone? Sometimes you are like, okay, I'm friended out. Leave me be for a couple of hours or like a couple of days. So yeah, basically just going to the library doesn't mean anything more than just she's going to the library, she's enjoying some books. Though so this does this does bring us to a uh, oh god, I love this moment where they literally flash back to the very first episode. Song, voice and everything. It's the first thing one of the first things that we saw in this TV show. <laughs> and 
damn, they bring it back. And the way that Twilight comes back from there, I'm sorry, she looks like she just had a flashback to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can see the helicopters and the, the uh, Dire Straits music playing in the background. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's something happening here, here, but it is, it is exactly, ain't exactly clear. <laughs> but this this whole uh, scene here, like the flashback, it's how do I put this? It's simply a uh, rip from the original and put into this frame here. It's like awesome. Well, to to a certain degree, there are a couple of things that they changed in the animation, but it is. It is great to actually make a reference to that very first episode. It's like, yes, we are going all the way back to the beginning. We are doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, this is so cool. This, I, I like this because, okay, in the Return of Harmony, no, uh, Return of Harmony is this course episode, right? Yes. His riddles was, uh, long story short, go back to the very beginning. And bronies have, Analyze, well, they did their own conclusion. The very beginning means season one, episode one, frame one. I think something like that. Like the book. Yeah. That has, that is the one that the, 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 epi- the series starts. Yeah. Is the book that has the elements of harmony inside. Yeah. In Twilight so Slam. that's yeah, what yeah. they did. And this episode uh, here follows that trend. Uh, except that the book she used to study Nightmare Moon. Oh, actually, no, that was a secondary book. The one she blew the dust off of. Yes, yes, that's a, that's another book. That's, that's another book, but it was just close. Odd that she didn't take that with her to Ponyville. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but there is the other theme that in this episode, talking about Moondancer, you know, we, we go through, she's shutting pe- people out. Twilight's trying her best to, well, she's kind of making a mistake in my eyes. Uh, Twilight goes after Moondancer wholeheartedly, mm-hmm. butting in, chasing her around the library. <laughs> Thinking back to Twi- how Twilight discovered her own friendship, that didn't work. Pinkie Pie's party didn't work. All that did was reinforce her belief that these ponies are crazy. <laughs> True. It, wa- it wasn't until she was at like her weakest moment where everything seemed lost and mm. she realized they were there for her. That well, was the moment she found friendship and son of a gun. That happens to Moon Dancer as well, mm-hmm. but different different circumstance really because uh, Twilight wasn't thinking on making friendships. She didn't see the point on that when Nightmare Moon could come back at any moment. So she's like, "No, every point in this town is crazy. Don't you understand? Nightmare Moon is going to come back and she's going to just kill us all." Like this situation is different because there is nothing on the balance other than well, uh, a, a friendship. I, I I actually see a, a, a lot of similarities. That mm-hmm. feeling of isolation is still is present for them both. That sense of despair is there for them both. Uh, there's that looking up and realizing that your friends are there if you just have the awareness to see them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe okay, the world threat may not be uh, the same, but there's sort of a personal world crumbling. Well, mm-hmm. it's. It, well, maybe because there is, yeah, there is a person. It's like to a to a lesser de- to a lesser degree, it's like the same amount of drama, but in a in le- it's less quantity of it. Maybe that's why Moon Dancer doesn't like flip out entirely after the like fourth time that Twilight tries to call her attention in the library. Well, like it's it's it ki- like, kind of like Twilight kind of like bargains or like blackmails her with. Uh, uh, tickling her m- magic curiosity. <laughs> like, because the, the first three times that she tries to talk with Moondancer, they don't work. But it's not until Twilight gets inside her book that Moondancer is like, hang on a minute, how did you do that? Not even I know how to do that, and I know a lot. How did you do that? Uh, uh, th- th- that's probably one of the weak points of the episode for me. That really? Twilight is kind of, yeah, Twilight is kind of blackmailing Moondancer into, like, being friends with her. I, it's I like if you if you it, go to dinner with us, I'm gonna teach you Haycart's method. And well, that's the thing that you well, getting people's attention is uh not very hard work. There's good and bad, and when you're done with the good, sometimes you need to go with the bad. So this here is what you need to do to get your mission accomplished. Well, and then there's really I'm about to reach the, the big topic mm-hmm. uh, when Twilight has another flashback envisioning Moondancer so depressed at her party 
uh, because Twilight didn't show up. Uh, and then her breakdown later. The message this episode is asking us to accept, at least for my perception, is this is all Twilight's fault. Yes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, and- I don't uh, finish, but I don't think I, I agree with you on that. But, but please continue. All right, basically, because Twilight, and believe me, I've had fans telling me this, like, in 50 posts, mm-hmm. uh, that basically Twilight sent Moondancer on this road of darkness and that through her one act of insensitivity, Twilight ruined this pony's life and hurt her so deeply, and I don't mean to sound dismissive, but I hear that, I've heard this so often. And if I could beg one thing of all the listeners, never put that kind of pressure on yourself. True. Don't ever make yourself responsible for someone else's happiness. Let's compartmentalize this. Twilight skipped Moondancer's party and it hurt. Understandable. Twilight is trying to make amends for that and, you know, pr- credit to her. But everything that happened after that party was Moondancer's own choice. Mm-hmm. It's natural to feel hurt. It's natural to be hesitant to put yourself out there again after being hurt. But at the end of the day, the only person we can hold accountable for our actions is ourselves. And if we, it, and you can't start to improve your situation until you own that fact. I let friendships fall by the wayside. I didn't reach out. It's not Twilight's fault that uh, Moondancer didn't reach out to the friends that did show up. It's Moondancer's own choice, consciously or not, to withdraw. Mm-hmm. And Perhaps this is explained by the fact that Moon Dancer was already kind of an introvert and doesn't didn't feel safe getting out of her shell. And the one time that didn't work out, kind of like mark her, well, like and it marked her so hard. No, let, let me finish because I I don't really agree with that that point of view. Is that yeah? First of all, this is not Twilight's fault. I agree. I don't think the episode is making us think that this is Twilight's fault. It's just that Twilight feels like it's all her fault. It's not saying, oh, this is all Twilight's fault. This is her. She, she she should be ashamed of of what she did. I don't think the episode is hammering it hard enough to really be saying that. But I I agree is that Moon Dancer should have been the one reaching out and and connecting back with the, the uh, with the friendships. But if Moon Dancer was already difficult or uh, had a hard time trying to uh, be social. If the one time that she had the chance to be social doesn't work out, and it work out, it doesn't work out in like, in like such a disastrous way, like later on we 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 see her melting. She has a meltdown where she says, "I was humiliated." Like that leaves a mark. That leaves one scarred at least for a, for a while. So of course she 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 ref- refuges on. On her books, she refuges on the thing that she knows is not going to betray her. The, that for her books are safer than ponies. For her, studying is uh, more comfortable than partying. Mm-hmm. She doesn't feel like everything is going to crumble around her and make her feel humiliated because they are not going to stuff her in the back and run away. And that is from her perspective. Maybe that's why she didn't reach out. She was scared, that scared of like suffering that thing again. And no. I think Twilight knows, and that's why she organizes another party to make up for the for the first one that didn't work out. It's like to prove her that she shouldn't be afraid of that kind of life. Well, I do agree with you both on certain points, but in my opinion, or the way I look at it, it's like this. The episode here is really slamming the hammer down on Twilight, saying that this is mm. your fault. Like, I don't think so, dude. No, no, I don't no, think no. the episode is doing that. No, no, I think but, it's Twilight... But, but, yeah, Twilight is doing this in herself. Like, the episode yes. is telling us, the yeah, audience, Twilight that... Yeah, Twilight is doing this to herself. She's yeah, doing like, this to herself. Even in the flashback where she sees a light. Like, the, the story's going this way, and Twilight is blaming herself on this. And, well, it goes on hammering to Twilight that, hey, because of what you did, you made Moondancer's life miserable. Like, you did this to her. But if you think about it in the sense of what was happening back then... If she did go to the party, Equestria screwed. Yeah, well, collateral damage, dude. Collateral and that's damage. why... The... No, really, it is collateral damage. It's like, oh, yeah, Equestria yeah, is safe, but he's put that friendship on the on the yeah, I mean, like, disappearing. Uh, like, here's what I'm saying. Like, everything happens for a reason. Like, okay, there's pros and cons to everything. Twilight didn't go to the party. What happens? She saved the day, Equestria is safe. 
Moon Dancer's feeling got hurt. What if she did go to the party? Moon Dancer's feelings were uh, not hurt. They were best friends, but Equestria's doom. Yeah, dude, that's called the lesser evil. You have to pick. There is no good choice. There is like like there is there is no easy choice. You have to pick the one that you know is going to hurt the less people. Mm. And yeah, of course, she would rather uh, save Equestria yeah, than so, I mean, anybody uh, keeping, else would. Keeping, keeping that friendship, of course. But here's another point too. Moon Dancer here, like, I don't know how important Twilight is because the thing is, all of her school friends are there. You got Minuet, you got Lemon Drops, you got um, who was it again? The other one, the pink Twinkle thing? Shine, Twinkle, Twinkle Shine. Shine. They're, they're there, and at least you have three out of your four friends there. So that's at least to be something. Like, how important is Twilight to Moon Dancer here? Are they BFFs or something like that? Like, Ma- well, they were reading. Bo- they were reading a book together. I mean, just about it because maybe they, maybe because they have similar personalities, they could be more compatible with each other. Probably. I mean, the others were in the flashback. We saw the others chasing after lemon drops, lemon hearts. I mean, I keep calling her the lemon drops for some reason. They ke- they were chasing after lemon hearts and Twilight and Moondancer. They were just reading a book at the desk. Yeah, I, I mean. mean that says enough to say, yeah, these two have a compatible personality and they will be friends. True, but the, the other point here is also that, like what Silver said, is Moon Dancer, okay, Twilight didn't came, boo ha ha, I mean, so sad. I, but still, you have other friends, so why not I try and cope? I, I think she did, but she kind of gave up halfway. So it's hard for me to side with anyone here because Twilight was just doing her job, and Moon Dancer here could have have a better outlook on her life. But we carry on to the party that Twilight's going to do. Uh, hang on a minute before we carry on. Silver, I feel like you wanted to say something, and we kept cutting over you. The desire to stay in the safe zone with the books. I agree with that. That is very true of an introverted personality. But <laughs> at the end of the day, that still means that's the choice individuals make. And believe me, I've been there. All right, don't let this charming persona fool you. I'm actually intensely introverted. <laughs> it's true. I scored like a thirty on the Myers Briggs. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. You, you you told us before. Oh, okay. Well, now everyone knows. Now you know my dark secrets. But there comes a point where you have to own up to the fact. Yes, I chose to stay in the safe zone. I I got hurt once, and I chose to to re- to recoil. And that's natural, it's understandable, but to keep blaming someone else for that situation is not healthy. There's one line in this episode, one line that alludes to that this was Moondancer's choice. It's probably says, don't let me ruin friendship for you. Don't let, or is it, don't let my mistake? Something along those lines. Mm -hmm. She says that, and that's like, there, that's the message here. Don't let one person's mistake control your actions. But that doesn't shine through as clearly as the hurt that was that came from Twilight's choice. And that's why I feel like this episode is perhaps kept focusing too much on blaming Twilight rather than saying that opened the door for Moondancer to make the wrong choices. Well, when you say one thing, when you are accusing someone of something that they, they might have done to you, uh, and you are upset and you are angry. I, I guess you are talking about the part in the party where she starts beating up the piñata and she starts saying how Twilight her her how the her other three friends finally made uh, help her to get out of her shell. And then you didn't show up. You're the one who ruined everything. When people are angry, they say many things that they don't really mean. Mm. And that... if they if she really meant those things, what happens next wouldn't have happened. But it's also got a companion piece in that when Twilight envisions the party. Uh, you know, she's having what looks like a flashback, but she wasn't there, so it must be her imagination. Yeah, it must it's, be what she thinks it happened. Moon Dancer's breakdown pretty much completely validates that image, so it's in a lot of ways validating Twilight's guilt, and that's where I get, uh, that's where I start to worry about this. That, and as we'll see soon, Moon Dancer had a sister. Oh my, she has a sister. She has a, what is it with Cantrelot siblings? <laughs> okay, you've got shiny best brother forever, except he's never there. And there you, 
Then you've got, oh, I've been in such a lonely and sad state. If only there was someone. Oh, hi, sis. This is actually the part of the episode where I have to talk about my personal what kind of like feelings towards it because I didn't even bring that. Is that Moon Dancer reminds me a lot of my sister. Even in the way that her hair is and everything, like she reminds me a lot, a lot of my sister is that when you get so wrapped up onto something or when you get so deep into your studies or when you live with someone for so long, you kind of like get numb to their presence. Or you you stop paying attention to to them. You don't realize that they are there. I think the message of this episode is you have more friends than you realize because you might have lost touch with someone, or you like you lose a friendship with someone else, and then you are like, oh no, I lost this friendship. I lost this person. I am I, I feel so sad and down and depressed. And then you can like I this has happened to me recently. I kept ignoring the plus 20, plus 30 other good friends that I have that they were giving me their support and I was so upset and I was so sad and so wrapped up on losing this one person that I thought that nobody else existed. So, uh, from Moondancer's perspective, I can totally understand this that behavior. Is that, yeah, of course I w- you would forget that uh, you can count on your... Uh, on like the people that you see daily, like the librarian, the the bookseller, your your own family, as friends and people you can rely on. That happens. Like you can get to a level of upset that you can actually forget everyone around you exists. My my, my thoughts, my thoughts. This is completely personal for me. This is something that really, this is this is struck a chord so hard that I was like, this is the part of the episode where I was like, oh god, this hurts. <laughs> oh, I, this hurts. Why do I like it so much? This but, hurts. Oh. I, I do agree with you with that. Like, I do agree because every, day-to-day life, like, when we go to the store, when we go to any place, like, first things first, home, family, like, sometimes we forget that they could be friends too. We just look at them as family members. Like, what are family members to begin with? People who just live with us in the same place. That's about it. But some people can go beyond that to friendship. But other than that, they're just people that are related to me. And then when we go to the store, like some people can make good, close um, friendship with people who, well, mend the gas station or mend the library or whatever it is. Some people just see them as a person I know who works here, and that's about it. The way I'm looking at it is that, hey, these people that you see every day, family, uh, person you know who works at a store or library or whatever it is, they can be friends too. They have their personal quirks that if you were to know them, would be very entertaining. This just strikes that this episode hits people on a personal chord, and depending on your experiences... You're going to interpret it a, a variety of different ways. True that. Which is really awesome. Like this kind of episode where we see the same thing or we see the same page, but we're on different paragraphs. That's cool. So, okay, uh, have we actually, are we actually done talking about it? Or yeah. Have let, we reached the let, end? No, not well, yet, because there's a few things. Like there's, there's a, a few things that we have left to talk about. Yeah. Like the party. Part, no, wait, wait, before the party. Like Pinkie Pie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The, I the demand she be made Grand Duchess of Friendship at this point. Okay, <laughs> the, the title of Princess has been taken, but if you notice that Pinky has, uh, she detected the false smiles of the town. Mm-hmm. She saved she saved the day from the yaks. She mended the the rift between Gilda and Rainbow. Dash, mm-hmm. and now she's Twilight Secret re- weapon of mending relationships. Pinky, I I am proud of Fluttershy for how assertive and active she's been in this season. But Pinky's the go-to day saver. Yep, yep. You know one thing, okay, um, if you guys look in the wiki page or just the scene where they bump into Minuet and Pinky flies off, the way she's flying with her tail reminds me of Tails from Sonic. <laughs> and before that, actually, the way that she's flying and how the, the camera follows her and everything, mm-hmm. is that a reference to Doctor Strangelove? I don't know. Well, do you remember, have you guys ever watched that movie where, or that iconic scene with the guy falling down, riding the nuclear warhead? Oh, that one. Probably. That's... <laughs> it looks way too similar to be a coincidence. I'm going to call it a reference. Probably. I don't know. 
but yeah, Pinky does know a lot of ponies, like Minuet. <laughs> like, ha <laughs> She knows everybody, but that's Pinkie Pie is the second most intro, uh, extroverted of the main six. Mm-hmm. She really mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And then we go to the library, my favorite scene of all. Ooh, piece of candy. Oh, God, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who leaves books lying on the ground? That is so silly. You know what? I accept it. It's like that is that is that is a visual that is a visual guy that is going all the way back to the Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. Oh, just uh, say Family it's, Guy, it's, man. It's, like, uh, it's like no, no, no. The, the Roadrunner and the Coyote did that before Family know, Guy did it. But Family it's, Guy did it. Family Guy did it funny to me because okay, but that's, who, who well, was who was it? Funny I because it was ja- James Woods. It was yeah, okay, James, James Woods. Okay. That's why it was the, funny. The, the thing is, like, okay, I think that's not the first time he was on. Like, oh, James Wood. Like, he first time was funny. Like, oh, piece of candy. Oh, piece of candy. The second time they did it, like, you're falling for the same trap again. <laughs> Like, well, hmm. they did it with with chicken pie as well on the lunar eclipse episode. Like, it, so, uh, it, it, this it, show is this show is well versed on bringing others <laughs> with candy or books <laughs> to where they are meant to go. Okay. Um, all I can take from this is that Cancer Lot runs on the honor system because nobody took stuff from Twilight's abandoned library, and no one is taking these books in the middle of the street. Cancer Lot ponies are apparently very honor bound. I like to think that this is like the Star Trek universe where they, th- there is no money, they just do things to best themselves, <laughs> etc. <laughs> Probably. I don't know. And then we reach to the party. Yay, party! Which we kind of talked about already. Yeah. Yeah, okay. we already talked, we already talked about the party. Okay, now, now, now I need to talk about something like, you guys see that Pinky by family and friends, right? Like the librarian, the bookstore keeper, was it? The, the, the book, the bookseller, the, the librarian, bookseller. the bookseller, and, and, the sister. Mundanser's sister. Okay. The bookseller is Honey Lemon. Ah, from yeah. Big Hero 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to mention that. Like, she totally is. There yep. is no way this cannot be a reference. And if you look at the curio mark, it's bees and honey. It's, it's a bee with a, with a honeycomb, yeah. yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I see what, I see what you, you're saying. You, you see that now? Oh, yeah. Uh, now we need Baymax. <laughs> now we don't. Anyway. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, we did talk about the party already and all that. And may I comment something regarding, uh, uh Moondancer's, uh, breakdown and when she starts crying and all that? Mm-hmm. Okay. Sure, sure. I think that is, uh, okay, no, I don't think I know. That is the most heartbreaking, realistic, and kind of like, the, okay, that's not acting. That is a real person crying, right? That, that's that 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 broke my heart. Moment is that when when Moon Dancer just throws herself to the floor and starts crying. I don't I don't remember who voiced Moon Dancer in that moment, but g- give her an award. Give her an award right now. That is that that killed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it, that is hard to watch in a good way. In a good way, it's like that's ah no. Stop crying! Have you seen the edit? The, oh, you're talking about, no, I'm not talking about that edit yet. Oh. I will talk about that edit. <laughs> uh, but no, I'm not talking about that edit. I'm talking about the moment before Twilight goes to Moon Dancer and she's mm-hmm. like, please forgive me for this. Don't let my, my mistake not mm-hmm. let you appreciate friendship. Ah, uh, uh, the feels. Yeah, that, that was good. That was good. In terms that of was acting, fr- yeah, it was good. That was really good. That was, that was really, really good. Uh, but, yeah, so in the end they ended uh, they ended making up, or in that edit they ended up making out. Um, <laughs> you know the one that I'm talking about. Come on, yep. it was super cool. Then. Mm-hmm. I think it, it was even on Equestria Daily. <laughs> yep. And uh, then they go on to say to party, and I think that is where I have an issue with this episode. Like I I understand you guys having an, an issue with that and all that, but it's kind of like a silver lining, and at the same time an issue that I have with the way that this episode is told. Is that in any real life situation, this conflict wouldn't be solved so easily. Like, it wouldn't be so much as, hey, I'm sorry for neglecting you over this whole time and I didn't even go back to be friends with you. Oh, I'm friends with you again. Let's party. Nah, no, that's not how it will work. That's not I how it goes. Don't agree I, because I can see this happening because the breakdown I, was epic. The big, the big one was epic. Like everyone's there, like family, friends, and whatnot. 
and her breaking down and accepting Twilight's forgiveness. And what do you what do you do after accepting one's forgiveness? Like, but that's the thing. I think it happens too quickly. She accepts Twilight's for Twilight. She forgives Twilight way too quick. Uh, I know twenty two minute limit. They didn't have the time to do that. In any other situation, this wouldn't have been solved so quickly. The, the, in fact, I will say the only time that I have seen these shows fix a problem or like tackle this in such a, in a more real way is when Discord tried to uh, apologize to uh, what was her name, Tree Hugger, yeah. and Tree Hugger was like, "Ah, uh, I can have like a minute before clearing my chakras so I can hug you from a place of truthness." It's like I think that was the only time I have seen someone say, "Hey, look, okay, you apologize, but I'm gonna need a little bit more time to forgive you." <sighs> okay, but the good thing about that that moment and the one thing that I like is that it is such a relief to to see them fixing that and saying, "Yeah, okay, you know what? Let's move on from this. I forgive you. This is good because it's like there is so much drama you can handle in real life that." It is good to see a bit of relief. It's good to see a bit of like peace and quiet and nice, nice resolution. That I am glad that this happy ending. I acknowledge that it's a bit of a manipulative happy ending, but it feels so good that it's a happy ending. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh god, I'm so happy that these two are uh, managed to fix this. Because if they did, if they would have managed to fix this, it would have broken my heart. Yep. And I, I, in my current state, I don't want to get my heart broken. No, please, give me happy, <laughs> give me joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Although, I, would you say it was manipulative? <laughs> manipulative. <laughs> I'm sorry, I talk a lot, but that's oh god. Right. I apologize for talking so much, but I just wanted to bring that up. Is that? And like you said before, Silver, this episode does strike a chord with a lot of people, pers- uh, like on, from a from a deep personal level. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's the biggest, uh, that's the best virtue of the episode is that pe- it 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 says something to people. True, and well, we come near the end where Spike gives Moon Dancer his present that he wanted to give a year back or four seasons ago. And yeah, it's a picture of them hanging out at a place. I don't know. Yeah. And Besides the, it looks like the donut. It shop, looks like actually. Donut Joe's shop, but they're having cupcakes. So mm. Mm, maybe he sells something else than donuts. Probably. But hey, um, after that, we see them all. Well, we see Moon Dancer having a positive outlook on life and playing ball. I got no idea what ball is that. Yeah, it's just like they're, they're like playing hockey or something like that Probably. in the middle of the street. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's one of my favorite shots of the episode. All of them getting together and going out to play. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. one of the most optimistic and uh, lighthearted uh, ways to end it. And I, I love that part. Good end. It, it, it has good end all written all over. Yeah. I wish Twilight could have joined. But hey, Twilight's a busy man. She's a princess of friendship. I don't mind this. And you can, you can, you can see by the way that they are acting is that. Moon Dancer is gonna be okay. Yeah. Like now she's gonna, now she's gonna be, she's gonna be fine. She will be, now she has a different perspective in life, mm-hmm. in that she will not just, that doesn't mean she's gonna drop her books, but every now and then she will be able to get her head out of the books and mm-hmm. enjoy sometimes with, sometime with her, with her friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, that's the episode. That's like, the episode. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, well, how do we handle this? Because. Well, I, I know I have an idea. Let's talk about the things that, in case it wasn't clear, let's mm-hmm. talk about the things that we like, the things that we didn't like, <laughs> and where it's, where this episode stands on the overall season five, Ooh. uh, or, or, or on our own season five rating of what we think are the best and the worst episodes. It's like, what, let's, let's talk about it because it's like, we are like one episode away from reaching the, 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 Final. the halfway point. Mm. So, yeah. So, yeah, let, let's, let's go ahead and do that. And I, uh, a vote for the uh, inverted alphabetical order. So let's go, Silver, with, with, with oh, yours. Okay. So what I like about this episode, oh, so much, the excellent use of continuity, taking background characters and fleshing them out, something I feared would go by the wayside after Slice of Life, but it didn't, and we'll see more of it in uh, in Do Princesses Dream of Electric Sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or is it? Magic, and magic sheep. <laughs> magic, magic sheep. And so... Characters, fleshing out, continuity. Uh, I like that this does appeal to people on a personal court, and th- as a result, we have very intense discussions at, based on it. Negative-wise, there's the, imp- there's the implication that being an introvert is not good, which is not true. 
many of the great advances in this world are due to introverts and their perspective on life. Uh, there's also the sense of guilt that Twilight has, which is in keeping with her character, but there's never a moment that says, this isn't totally your fault. There's also responsibility on Moondancer. Uh, and that, that, but all, all stacking it up, Tanks for the Memories remains my favorite of season five, but so, so far. But this one is a very close second. I didn't think that you were going to put it that high, actually. <laughs> I don't agree with the message, but I can see the reaction and the, and what it does. It has a lot going for it. I mean, I can have people, you talk about the Nagus because that's often what people want to discuss. Uh, you know, to, to debate, to haggle, to, uh, talk about it, but that doesn't mean it's a bad episode. It just means it's generated discussion. As for me, the things that I like about this episode is, well, the continuity, the background character being flushed out, and, well, things that, well, the cuteness in this episode is high, and uh, what do I say? I mean, I think I said all that I need to say in the review. The things that I don't like is how, well, how they kind of beat the hammer down on Twilight, saying that, this is your fault. This is your fault. That eh, could be work a bit more, but I don't know. It does work in the story, but mm, I didn't quite like that part. Minor nitpick, to be honest. Other than that, I just like this episode. And in terms of where I stack it, I don't know. Like I haven't, I haven't considered about making a list of which is the best episode. But I think this is good. I don't know. I still haven't made a list. Well, um, oh gosh, uh, this, okay. I don't think this episode is, uh, well, I think this episode is spectacular, by the way. I think this is, this is something that, uh, that it does, uh, get too close to home for me because I, I moved twice. I had to rearrange my circle of friendships twice and, uh, I had to, <laughs> I had to do the same thing when I moved from one fandom to another because uh and I lost a lot of touch with the fandom I, uh, with all the people on the fandom that I was previously on when I moved to the Brony fandom so uh I it really hits close to home so from a personal perspective it is a very good episode that I deals with a lot of issues that I have had in the past I I don't know if I should call it like my favorite episode of the season like um it was, uh, what was it? The episode with Luna and, and Apple Bloom. Oh, uh, Bloom and Gloom. Bloom and Gloom, yeah. Uh, that episode and Slice of Life are like right now tied on <laughs> number one, uh, at this moment. Uh, but I think this might be on the top five, easily on the top five. Uh, but the more I think about this episode, this, the more I like it. Uh, it's one of those. I, uh, from the things that I didn't like, really, what I, Mentioned before about, uh, pe- perhaps a conflictive message on the, the way that they were presenting, uh, how Twilight and Moon Dancer were fixing everything in such a hurried up way. But the things that I like are so, there are so many. But if I had to pick one, just one, I will go with the character of Moon Dancer. She is just so, she's so lovable. And that's, that's, it's not the same as likable. There's a difference. Is that with likable character, it's like a character that I would like to hang out with and be friends with. Lovable is a character that I want to hold on my arms and say everything is gonna be fine, don't <laughs> worry, everything is gonna be okay. And that only happened once. Uh, once before this episode. It happened with the, I think it was the character of Coco Pomel. <laughs> that she was, she was so lovable. It's like, I don't know with, with like, Alternate interpretations of the main six, like people call Coco a, a re, uh, reinterpretation of Fluttershy, but the same way that Moon Dancer is kind of like a reinterpretation of Twilight. But God, she's just. <laughs> I want. I, 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 if I find a plushie of Moon Dancer, I'm gonna get one because she's that great. So yeah, I can um, see that. I can see that. I, I, re- I really, I really like her. So yeah, I mean, this episode, great, awesome. I. I think it's awesome. It's great. Well, there you go. I don't know what else to say. I'm repeating yeah. myself. Yeah. But anyway, James, next week's episode, what are you going to do, man? Next week's episode. Well, next week's episode is not going to be an episode. We're going to be reviewing a comic. 
Now we're going back and forth, uh, reviewing one episode, one comic, until we run out of episodes. Then we are only talking about the comics. We only have one episode left. <laughs> well, I, I, I do, I do know that someone out there is wanting us to review the movie. Uh, uh, well, we're not gonna review a movie. We're not gonna review an episode. We're gonna review issue number sixteen of the Friends Forever series, starring Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara, written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Jen Blake and colors by the always awesome Heather Breckel. But that will be a story for another time. Thank you guys so much for uh, coming here. Thank you so much for watching this podcast and. If you want to hear more and listen to more, there's always the MBS Show YouTube channel where you can check past episodes and future episode reviews. This has been James Cork. I have been Norman Sanzo. Ooh, piece of candy. And I'm feeling... What is Again. this feeling? I do not understand. Great, right, there is glass everywhere now. Are you happy? Yes, I'm feeling... Oh, in some God. parts. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Glass in there is not nice. Oh, you no. <laughs> uh, anyway, bye-bye. Goodbye. Adios. Now let's get you to the hospital. Come on. <laughs>